We're joined now by Kurt Volker, former U.S. Ambassador to NATO. He's now Executive Director of the McCain Institute for International Leadership at Arizona State University. Retaking Fallujah, it's important for symbolic reasons. First city to fall to ISIL. But talk to us about, from a strategic standpoint, just some of the other reasons why Fallujah is so important. Well, there are a couple of things. One of them is that Fallujah it helps connect the ISIS territory. You have Raqqa, you had Palmyra before, you had Fallujah, you had Ramadi before. You had an area of territory that ISIS could claim was a caliphate. As you start chipping away at that, there's less and less that they can claim is part of this new caliphate that's going to take over the Middle East. So it, it damages significantly the ISIS narrative about who they are. Let me get back to the narrative in just a moment, but, but military officials, I wanted to talk to you about some of the, it's so layered, and that's what makes this so interesting. Military officials seem very unhappy that forces were diverted to the green zone because of all these protests. And the, 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 here they are going after ISIL, but then they've got a, on the rear flank, the actual capital, they've got this issue. There's so many problems, a problem government. Um, does a victory in Fallujah, does that help the Abadi government or are they still in trouble? It's still trouble. It's still trouble because the problem with the government in Baghdad it is that it has come to be seen as an Iranian-dominated Shia government, uh, which is only serving part of the Iraqi people. And that alienates the Sunni population to the north of Baghdad, including in the area around Fallujah, and alienates the Kurds who are to, further to the north. So um, the extent to which Baghdad is seen as doing the Iranians bidding against the Sunnis is actually reinforcing the ISIS narrative. And ISIS, of course, wants to inflame that by doing these kinds of bombings in Baghdad and creating this kind of sectarian tension. So it masks the fact that this is an ISIS struggle, but really makes it a bigger Sunni-Shia struggle. And uh, getting to that point, uh, I read somewhere today that there's a, a growing concern that the more they lose on the battlefield, the more opportunities there are going to be for bombings in Baghdad. So is it you get victories here, but you also suffer at That's home. also part of the ISIS strategy, in fact. So it's not just losing in uh, the battlefield around Fallujah and attacking in Baghdad, but it's attacking in Libya, it's setting up base camps in Afghanistan, it's trying to export yourself into Pakistan or in Indonesia. So that what we see is that while ISIS is losing territory in Syria and Iraq that it did control, and so arguably is less of a caliphate than it claimed to be, at the same time, they are exporting their ideology and their violence around the world, whether it's Paris attacks or territory in parts of the broader Middle East region. And so it's hard to say that these attacks in these key cities are, in fact, weakening ISIS overall. I think it's, it's metamorphizing, if you will. Uh, is the problem that there's sleeper cells in Baghdad? Is the problem that the checkpoints don't work and they're, they're, it, it's easy, easy mobility for them? I mean, or is it a combination of all I'd say things? it's a combination of everything. It's the ability to infiltrate people who put on a false identity, say, I'm Shia, I'm Shia I am a militiaman, I am a government soldier, and they can infiltrate that way. They can carry weapons with them. You might have sleeper cells. You might be able to smuggle things in that then get to people who are already inside. There's any number of ways in which people try to penetrate that. The surest defense of Baghdad is when all of the communities, Kurdish, Sunni, and Shia, agree that what they're trying to do is protect the capital. When it becomes a sectarian contest, that it is the Shias protecting it against Sunnis or against Kurds, which is what ISIS wants to provoke. The more that's the case, the easier it will be to penetrate. So victory is complicated in that victory really is stability, which is something that's, that's been very difficult to achieve there in some time. Uh, I think for each of these different groups, victory is identity. So are we able to protect and preserve our identity, our culture, our uniqueness in this space? To the extent they feel that, that is threatened, they feel defensive and they fight back. To the extent they feel they can make gains in order to protect and promote and preserve that, such as some of these Shia militias are now doing, they feel that. Only when you can get beyond the issues of identity, that there is actually something greater, stability, peace, prosperity, that everyone can strive for, then you can make real progress. But when it reduces down to identity, you're going to have conflict. All right. Kirk Volker, always a pleasure having you on the broadcast. Thanks so much for breaking things down for Thank us. Thank you, Mike. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.